On Monday, President Obama granted clemency to 231 prisoners, the most individual acts of clemency granted in a single day by any president in U.S. history. Obama pardoned 78 people and shortened the sentences of 153 others convicted of federal crimes. He has now pardoned a total of 148 people during his presidency and has shortened the sentences of 1,176 people, including 395 serving life sentences. Most of the cases have involved people serving long sentences for nonviolent drug offenses. According to the White House, Obama's commuted more sentences than the last 11 presidents combined. But Obama has taken no action on several several of the most high-profile prisoners seeking pardons or clemency. Hundreds of thousands of people have signed petitions asking President Obama to release Puerto Rican independence activist Oscar Lopez Rivera, Army whistleblower Chelsea Manning and Native American activist Leonard Peltier. We'll look at Manning's case later in the show and Oscar Lopez Rivera's later in the week. But first, we turn to the case of Leonard Peltier. This is a video from Amnesty International, which has been pushing for President Obama to grant Leonard Peltier clemency. This video video is narrated by actor Peter Coyote. I am everyone who ever died without a voice or a prayer or a hope or a chance. Leonard Peltier is a Native American activist who's been in prison for 40 years, serving two consecutive life terms for a crime he maintains he did not commit. In 1977, he was convicted of killing two FBI agents, Ronald Williams and Jack Kohler, during a shootout on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Peltier was a member of the American Indian Movement, AIM, founded in 1968 during the Civil Rights Movement to advocate for the rights of Native Americans. The murders occurred at a time when AIM supporters and residents of Pine Ridge were being intimidated and killed, allegedly by paramilitaries connected to the government. A climate of fear and terror prevailed. After two AIM members were acquitted of the killings, witnesses were coerced by the FBI into saying they saw Peltier shoot the agents. Ballistics evidence that could have aided Leonard's defense was hidden from his lawyers. The only thing I'm guilty of is struggling for my people. I didn't kill those agents. It was not a fair trial. The conclusion reached by federal appeals judge Gerald Heaney, who stated the prosecution withheld evidence favorable to the defendant and the FBI used improper tactics in extraditing Peltier and otherwise in investigating and trying Peltier's case. I'll be an old man when I get out. <laughs> if I get out. Leonard Peltier has spent 40 years in federal penitentiaries, often in solitary confinement. He's now 71 years old and in rapidly declining health. There are concerns that he's not receiving adequate medical treatment and his condition could be fatal. They're giving him the death penalty by leaving him in that type of an environment. The man needs medical treatment. He needs to have access to medical treatment. If they're not going to give medical treatment to him, they need to release him as soon as possible. That's a video from Amnesty International, which is calling for President Obama to grant Leonard Peltier clemency. That last voice was Bruce Smith, a former prison guard who worked at Leavenworth Federal Prison, where he met Leonard Peltier. Peltier is now imprisoned in Florida. To talk more about the case of Leonard Peltier, we're joined by two guests. Martin Garbus is one of the country's leading trial lawyers and lead counsel for Leonard Peltier. Norman Patrick Brown is a longtime friend of Leonard Peltier's. He survived the 1975 Pine Ridge shootout. He's joining us from Albuquerque. New Mexico. Um, Martin Garbus, lay out the case. You have asked President Obama or the White House for a pardon for Leonard Peltier. Or the, he was convicted in 1975. He was involved in the wounded, shortly after the wounded D shootout. The evidence in the case, acknowledged by the government and acknowledged by the federal judges, is that the the FBI does not know who shot the two people, that the ballistics do not support the argument that Leonard Peltier did it. Uh, the important thing at this time, for your listeners, is to write to the president. Uh, Amnesty International has a site which allows you to join their petition. Over 100,000 people thus far have joined the petition. 
There are about 300,000 additional letters. So this is a case of a man who's been in jail now for 44 years, six years in, in solitary, a case that one of the judges who presided in the case, the appellate judge, just Healy, said that Peltier should be released because of the wrongful conduct of the judge. There are— And explain what that conduct, that conduct was. The wrongful conduct was not producing, at the trial, the ballistics would show that it could not have been Peltier's gun that did the shooting. The wrongful conduct was, and the government acknowledges at this point, using false affidavits, both in the case and to extradite him from Canada, where he had le uh, been let. In this particular case, two pe other people were charged for the case. Uh, conviction, the murder. Both of those people were found innocent. And he, <clears throat> he would have been tried alongside them, but he had fled to Canada. Yes. So he was extradited and tried separately. Yes. But the proof against the other defendants was that it was their guns, et cetera, et cetera. Nonetheless, in part because of the wrongful conduct of the FBI, uh, they and what were was that wrongful yeah. conduct? The withholding of ballistics, the refusal they didn't turn the ballistics over to the U.S. attorney. The other wrongful conduct was it was they who got the false affidavits acknowledged to be false and found by the court to be false. So the only reason he was convicted was a the political atmosphere of the time, and two they succeeded the government in having the case tried before a judge, a very anti-Indian judge, rather than the judge who was involved in the acquittal of the other two defendants. I wanted to turn to Leonard Peltier in his own words, describing what happened at Pine Ridge on June 26, 1975, the day when the two FBI agents were shot dead. That next day, when it came down, I was down to the camp, and I heard some shooting going on up uh, over by the ranch house. At first, I didn't pay no attention to it, because there was some there's a, there's a dam close by there, about a mile away. I used to hear shooting there. We used to hear shooting there every day. Somebody used to be practicing there with automatic weapons. We think it was some of the goon squads. You know, we don't know for sure. But uh, at first, that's what we thought it was. And uh, then all of a sudden, we heard people screaming and hollering. And, uh, so we ran up there. And I, uh, we see what was happening. There was a shootout going on. So I ran into the houses, the houses, because there was little babies there and women and children and stuff like this here. And I got them out of there and told them to get get out of there. And by this time, we were surrounded, and the shootout lasted for about, well, from about 11 o'clock that morning till about 7 o'clock that night. So that was Leonard Peltier in his own words. Norman Patrick Brown, you were there that day in Pine Ridge. You survived the 1975 Pine Ridge shootout. Can you describe what happened? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a horrific day. Uh, it was a tragic day. Well, we lost three good men that day. And uh, my role there was as a, the youngest fighter there of a group of uh, people we, who were encamped there. We were, we were a spiritual encampment there to uh, protect the, the Oglala people and traditional people and A members from the brutality of the BIA uh, police goon squad, which were armed and uh, trained by the, uh, the FBI. Um, to this day, it, it's, it's been uh, a tough life for many of us. Um, I just want to state that uh, from that day that the agents lost their lives, we've, we've prayed for them continuously, and we feel for their families. And uh, we're, we're not happy about that day. I, I'm not happy of that day. And, you know, I was used as a federal witness. I, I was coerced. Uh, my rights uh, were not respected, the, my constitutional right to a lawyer. Um, my life was threatened. Uh, my mother's life was threatened also, my family. And I basically said some things that were not true. And I have since recount, recanted those statements in court. In fact, uh, the first two trials of Dino Butler and Bob Robidoux, Leonard Peltier's co-defendants, uh, one of the lawyers had asked uh, um, the jurors, asked the jurors who was the most believable witness, and they said Norman Brown. 
And he said, see, Norman, all these, all these years of, of uh, the suffering and the, the, the hardships of your life from this case, it was because of your statement that we created the, the, the self-defense uh, statement that acquitted Bob and Dino that day. So, you know, I guess what, what I did that day is uh, the shooting happened, and I ran up there, and immediately we were surrounded. And uh, we exchanged gunfire. And uh, I was not there at the time that the agents lost their life and Joe lost their life. Um, to this day, I, I don't want to know, and I, I do not know. But one thing I want to say, uh, Amy, is that there's this demonization of Leonard as a thug, as a, as a murderous uh, a criminal. But that's far from the truth. He, he's a very kind man. He's a generous man. He's a, a very funny person. Uh, you know, his people knew him as, as the person that he was. He was, he was very kind-hearted, and that was the reason why he went up to uh, Pine Ridge, because the elders had asked, uh, asked him to uh, lead this effort in protecting the various communities the, the, from the murders, from the gunfire, from the beatings. That, there were, that were directed at the American Indian Movement members. So I was a part of that group. There was many of us that were a part of that group. Norman, and we I— we knew that I wanted, uh, why we were there. It was a very— I wanted to ask Martin Garbus about the presence of the FBI on the Pine Ridge Reservation that day. Well, the uh, United States Civil Rights Commission afterwards concluded that the FBI was an occupying force on the reservation that they had free reign and were arresting people and beating people. And that was the situation when Wounded Knee started. There's one other thing I'd like to mention. This was the time of Nixon. This was the time of Alexander Haig. And they called out the military. It's called a posse comitatus. They called out the military to shoot at the Wounded Knee Indians who were encircled. So that you had by the way, President Clinton, we understand, was about to grant clemency. And when that happened, the FBI staged a demonstration outside of the White House, 500 men with guns. First time that has ever been done, Clinton was, uh, drew back. I wanted to go um, to that interview that I did with President Clinton and um, asked him about clemency. It was back in 2000. Many of Leonard Peltier's supporters had high hopes that outgoing President Bill Clinton would pardon him before the end of his second term. On Election Day, which was November 7, 2000, I got a chance to question President Clinton and asked him if he had any intention of issuing a pardon for Leonard Peltier. What is your position on granting Leonard Peltier, the Native American activist, uh, executive clemency? Well, I don't, I don't have a position I can announce yet. I think if I believe there is a new uh, application for him in there, and uh, when I have time after the election's over, I'm going to review all the remaining executive clemency applications and, uh, you know, see what the merits dictate. I, I will try to do what I think the right thing to do is based on the evidence. And I, I, I've never had the time actually to sit down myself and review that case. I know it's very important to a lot of people, maybe on both sides of the issue, and I think I owe it to them to give it an honest look-see. So part of my responsibilities in the last 10 weeks of office after the election will be to review the request for pardons and executive clemencies and give them a fair hearing, and I pledge to do that. And you will give an answer in his case? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll decide one way or the other. So, that was President Clinton Election Day 2000, and we right. know which way he decided. Mass right. protests by the FBI. He, and he pardoned Mark Rich. Explain. Uh, <laughs> well, he had a whole bunch of pardons. Mark Rich was a corrupt pol uh, person involved heavily with Clinton, someone who had been a donor to his campaigns. Uh, uh, no question about the rightness of his conviction. A millionaire financier, fugitive from justice, living in Switzerland. N uh, no support at all for his granting pardon and uh, clemency. And then he denied it to Peltier. He told us, Clinton, within the 
period before he was going to step down because of the election in 2000 that he would grant clemency to Leonard Peltier. And it was clear that it was the FBI demonstration. And the FBI opposes now. And they have started a letter writing campaign to Obama saying, do not release him, do not release him. That's why it's so important that your viewers respond, either by going to the Amnesty International site, but by themselves writing to the president. I mean, we see the FBI director is extremely powerful, uh, James Comey, who may have tipped the election for Donald Trump. Surely. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to mention is, if it's not done now, President Trump is, elect is highly unlikely. Uh, the next pardon is 2014. Uh, Leonard is sick now. He won't make it to his next pardon. He won't make it through a Trump presidency, I fear. What word have you gotten from the White House? Uh, no word. Well, we have submitted it to the pardon attorneys, who then have to send it on to the president. We understand that it has left the pardon office and is now on the president's desk. Well, I want to thank you very much for thank being you. with us. And I want to thank Norman Patrick Brown for joining us from Albuquerque, Martin Garbus, one of the leading trial lawyers in this country. Uh, this is Democracy Now! We will continue to follow uh, the call for clemency for Leonard Peltier as we do a series on high-profile prisoners that um, President Obama is weighing their clemency. This is